Joining me now to discuss this and much more is the Republican Senator from Texas, Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz, good to see you, sir. Bob, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. First, the border seems to be in crisis by any reasonable definition. What do you see going on and what has caused this? Well, I got to say, the facts you just reported on, they can't possibly be true because if you turn on the mainstream media, nobody's reporting on them. We, we, we spent four years of the Trump presidency with the media lighting their hair on fire, screaming about kids in cages. Well, as, as you and I both knew and pointed out at the time, those cages were built by Barack Obama. And, and right now today, we're seeing an incredible surge of unaccompanied children coming off across the border. And there's a reason for it. There is a cause and effect, which is Barack Obama and now Joe Biden promise amnesty. They have told people, if you come here as kids, you get to stay. You know, during the Obama administration, they asked all the unaccompanied kids who were coming, why are you coming? And the answer that they told DHS is because we get a permiso. In other words, we get here and we're allowed to stay. And the problem is you've got little boys and little girls who are being handed over to human traffickers, to violent cartels. These little kids are being physically assaulted, sexually assaulted. It is grotesque, it is inhuman, and it is getting worse under Joe Biden because his policies serve as a magnet to putting those kids in the place of abuse. If you want to be humane, if you want to be compassionate, then you secure the borders and you prevent kids from ever being put in the custody of human traffickers. Do you think that this is leading toward a further Democrat push for actual amnesty? And, and is that something that could get through the Senate if perhaps they decide that they're finally, the Democrats are finally willing to eliminate the filibuster? I, undoubtedly, that is where they're going. Joe Biden has already put forth an immigration plan that is the most radical immigration plan that has ever been put forth by an American president. Joe Biden has pr proposed American citizenship for everybody. Everyone here illegally, ali ali oxen free, everyone becomes a citizen. The rule of law doesn't matter. Joe Biden has directed DHS to stop enforcing the border. They've returned to catch and release. So if you're caught, you just get released. That's why we're seeing this surge of illegal immigration because they know the Biden administration is not gonna enforce the law. And I'll tell you one of the more stunning things, you've got some video up there right now of, of Biden signing executive orders. One of the more stunning orders he had is, is to say and to propose that anyone who was deported in the last four years should be able to come back. Now that includes murderers, that includes rapists, that includes child molesters, that includes drunk drivers who have killed people on American roads. They are so radical that even violent criminals, if they were deported by the Trump administration, apparently the Biden administration wants them back here. That doesn't make any sense. And, and it's not consistent with what the vast majority of Americans believe. While the border crisis continues to unfold, Senator, we know that we have this $1.9 trillion spending bill, to call it a COVID relief bill, seems to give it more credit perhaps than it's due, or at least gives it the wrong focus. Here's what Jen Psaki said about some of the intent of the bill. The president is taking nothing for granted. Uh, I will note that um, the plan uh, that the Senate uh, passed this weekend puts us one huge step closer to passing one of the most consequential and most progressive pieces of legislation in American history. Most progressive pieces of legislation in history. That doesn't sound like the moderate centrist, you could trust good old blue collar Joe that we were promised, Senator. No, th th there's a reason Bernie Sanders and AOC are, are celebrating and, and Jen Psaki there actually appears to have accidentally spoken the truth. Um, you know, if you look at this bill, there, there are a couple of things to say about it. Number one, it would have been very simple for the Biden administration to pass bipartisan legislation focused on COVID relief. Last year, Congress came together and passed bipartisan legislation on COVID relief five times. Five times you saw Republicans and Democrats work together. Republicans were more than ready to roll up our sleeves and say, let's focus on vaccines, on distributing the vaccines, on supporting health care, on getting kids back to school, on providing relief for families that are hurting or helping small businesses open their doors. All of those could have passed with massive bipartisan majorities. The Biden administration decided it didn't want to do any of that. Instead, it handed the pen over, it handed the agenda over to the radical left, to the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and AOC. And as Jen Psaki said, this is the most pro uh, progressive bill by which she means left-wing socialist knuckle-headed bill. 
that has that has passed in in decades. And, you, you know, I, I do a podcast every week called Verdict with Ted Cruz. And the last podcast, what I talked about is if you wanted to sum up the Biden administration, the first six weeks of the Biden administration in three words, the three words would be boring, but radical. And, and by that, I mean, I think Joe Biden has made a political decision to be incredibly boring, that after four years of Donald Trump dominating the headlines, every tweet dominating the headlines, I think the Biden administration decided people were tired of that. And so let's just have good old Uncle Joe be boring and not make news. And he's managed to do that. Uh, you know, you think about there are not many days in, in the last six weeks where you've woken up and said, what did Joe Biden say today? Because most days he doesn't answer questions from reporters, he doesn't say much of anything. But that boring is a mask. It's a facade for an incredibly radical agenda. And, and Buck, I'll tell you three amendments that we voted on uh, in the in the all night voting session we had. Number one, an amendment that, that I co-sponsored that said these these fourteen hundred dollar stimulus checks shouldn't go to prisoners, shouldn't go to violent criminals, murderers and rapists and child molesters currently in prison. Every single Democrat voted no. So this money is going to murderers currently in prison. Secondly, an amendment I introduced that said we shouldn't be sending these $1,400 taxpayer checks to illegal aliens, the 12 million illegal aliens in the United States. Again, every single Democrat voted no. And a third amendment that I introduced pro provided that we need to open the schools. And it said the money that's being sent, the billions of dollars that are being sent to schools, the schools don't get the new money unless they actually open up and teach our kids. And if they don't open up, the parents and kids get scholarships up to $10,000 a student so that kids who haven't been being educated for a year can actually be educated. Every single Democrat voted no. This is a radical partisan agenda. And, and we're going to see a lot more of it from the Biden administration. Speaking of radical partisan agenda, Senator, before we let you go, Kristen Clark is a nominee to be Associate Attorney General for Civil Rights in this Department of Justice. And you've been trying to get the word out about some of her troubling past positions. And for one thing, she was a big believer in Jussie Smollett's hoax and thought that that was a, a major issue that we should all be paying big attention to. But you tweeted out, the Democratic Party so radicalized that Joe Biden has nominated Kristen Clark to be Assistant Attorney General in the Civil Rights Division. Not only did she celebrate a convicted cop killer, she has troubling ties to the anti-Semitic nation of Islam, story that's not getting enough attention yet, Senator. I want to try to change that. And you can help us by telling us what do we need to know about this nominee to a very important role in the DOJ under this Biden administration? Well, you look at her record and, and, and it is a radical record. And by the way, there's a pattern, uh, uh, not only this nominee, but Vanita Gupta, who used to be the head of civil rights under the Obama administration and was just nominated for the number three position at the Department of Justice, just had her confirmation hearing today. In both instances, these individuals have had long careers, not as mainstream lawyers, not as demonstrating fidelity to law, but, it, but as radical left-wing activists. With respect to Ms. Clark, uh, she has vigorously defended a, a convicted and, and admitted cop killer who murdered a police officer. Not only that, she organized a rally in support of the cop killer where she invited as a speaker a, a, a noted anti-Semite from the Nation of Islam to speak in support of the cop killer. And this is who Joe Biden says should lead the civil rights division of the U.S. Department of Justice, someone who sides with cop killers over police officers, someone who is willing to celebrate and promote anti-Semitic hateful, hateful attacks. I, I, I think that is a very poor decision for a Department of Justice that's supposed to be fair and impartial and committed to the rule of law. Senator, you're going to have your hands full opposing the radical agenda. We appreciate you holding the line, though, sir. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure.